Hi, I'm Mike, and I'm going to show you how to find the first outlet in a daisy chain of outlets. It's so simple, you'll be surprised you had not already been using this method. It'll take you five to ten minutes at the most, and you don't have to take the covers off of any receptacle. If you're lucky enough to have an ideal sure test circuit analyzer or something similar, then you can do it in about two minutes. If you don't have one of these, then you need a multimeter and an extension cord, and it'll take you probably about five minutes, ten minutes tops. Let me show you what you have to do. So the first thing I did, I went to the breaker panel, I turned the breaker off that supplies the room in question, and then I used my outlet tester to identify every outlet that is on that circuit. And there was one outlet in a different room, very close to this room, that's on that circuit, and I'll show that to you. Okay, so this first method works off the principle of current running through wires creates a voltage drop. So what we're going to do is we're going to plug in a heavy load, and we're going to measure voltage drops between uh, different receptacles, and depending on whether we're measuring a voltage drop or not, we're going to know if we're upstream or downstream of where the current or the electricity is coming from. So let me show you how I'm going to do this. Okay, I'm here in the living room. So this receptacle near my front door is on the same circuit as my spare bedroom. So we've got one, two, three, four receptacles plus the one in the living room. So we've got five receptacles on this circuit. So we're going to figure out which of these is the first one in the chain. So to do that, you need an extension cord. You need a heavy current drawing load. I'm gonna use a hairdryer. And you need a multimeter. Let me show you my setup here. So what we're gonna do is measure the voltage drop on the neutral wire. And as I've experimented with this, I've found it very difficult to hold these probes steady inside the receptacle or inside the end of an extension cord. So I've bought some alligator clips and I've got the clip clipped onto the neutral blade here and, up and here. And this also makes it a lot easier to do this video because I don't have to sit and try to hold the probes into the slots. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug one of these into the extension cord. And again, this is on the neutral. Now you don't have to use these alligator clips. You can use the probe tip directly, but it is a little bit difficult to hold consistently uh, against the connector inside the extension cord. So the alligator clip definitely made this easier for me. And I'm going to do the same thing on the, with the other test probe from the multimeter. Okay, so we've got the multimeter ready. We've got it plugged into this receptacle and into the extension cord. And I'm going to plug the extension cord in to this receptacle. So basically we will be measuring the voltage drop from this receptacle to this receptacle. And to do that, we're gonna plug in my hair dryer in this receptacle here. Okay, so the multimeter is reading about four millivolts, five millivolts. Let's watch what happens when I turn on the hairdryer. Absolutely nothing happens. So that tells us that the current that is running to this hairdryer is not running between these two receptacles. So it cannot be coming this direction. If it were, we would get a voltage drop as we turn on the hairdryer. So to verify that, let's move the hairdryer to this receptacle. So now, if we get a voltage drop when we turn on the hairdryer, that will tell us that the current that's flowing to that hairdryer is running from here to here. Let's watch what happens. Ah, I tripped the GFI on the, oh no, I didn't, I just didn't plug it in well. Okay, let's watch what happens. Let's 
Look at that, it jumped up to 200 millivolts. So that is positive proof that the current to get over here to the hairdryer is running from here to there. Now, just based on logic and where the position of these are, the current could go from here to here, but it could also go from here to here to here to here. So how can we verify that? Let's plug the hairdryer in here and turn it on. And if we get a voltage drop, that will tell us that this outlet is downstream of the two where we're measuring the voltage drop. If we do not get a voltage drop, then this is upstream. So let's see what happens. Okay, so now we're plugged in here. We're still measuring the voltage drop from here to here. All right, so we're at 13 millivolts, 14 millivolts, turning on the hair dryer now. Okay, so it went up to 199 millivolts. So for the current to get over here, it is running between these two. So that tells us that this one is downstream of these two here. So this one is not supplying this one. So we only have one more option, and that's the one in the living room. So let's take the hairdryer into the living room. Okay, so I've got the hairdryer plugged in there. We're not gonna be able to do this real time, so to speak. Okay, we're at four or five millivolts. It's kind of bouncing around there. Okay, let's go back to the living room. <clears throat> Turn on the hair dryer. And they'll go we'll go back in here. Look at that. There is no change. So that tells us that the current that is running to the hair dryer is not running between these two receptacles. That confirms to us that the receptacle in the living room is the first one in the daisy chain. So to summarize, you want to measure the voltage drop on the neutral between two receptacles. Plug in your heavy load somewhere. If it creates a voltage drop on your multimeter, then you know that for the current to get to wherever the hairdryer is plugged in, it is running between the two receptacles where you're checking the voltage drop. So then you have to move the hairdryer to a different receptacle. If you had it plugged in here, then you would want to try to move it to one before this one. And then if that, at that point, it gives the opposite effect. If it were giving a voltage drop plugged in here, and then you put it in the one that's upstream of this one, or what you think is upstream, and it does not create a voltage drop, then you know you're going in the right direction. And since that one in the living room was the only other one on the circuit with this bedroom, we know that that one in the living room is the first receptacle in the chain. And to verify that, the best way to do it is take the cover off, pull the receptacle out, take the two hot wires loose, turn your breaker on, make sure one of those hot wires with the breaker on is hot and that the other one is not. Then you check all the other receptacles with the receptacle tester or some kind of voltage tester, multimeter. And if all the other ones on the circuit are indeed dead, then you know that the one that you've opened up and have disconnected the wires from is indeed the first one in the chain. That's how simple this is. Okay, now let's go to method two. If you're lucky enough to have an ideal sure test circuit analyzer, it's even simpler. Let me show you. Okay, so we're gonna do the same circuit. Here's the one that we've already identified as the first one in the chain. Look at the voltage drop, it's 5%. Here's the one we've identified as the second one in the chain. Voltage drop, 5.3%. 
go to the third one. What I suspect is the third one. 6% voltage drop. Number four, seven and a half percent. And finally, let's go to the last one. 8.9%. So you can see the voltage drop got progressively higher as we went from the first one to the second, to the third, to the fourth, and the fifth. It takes about two minutes with an ideal sure test. So if you've got the ideal sure test, use that. It's very simple. It'll take you about two minutes. If you don't, use the extension cord and a multimeter. It is a little difficult to hold those probes steady in the receptacle and in the extension cord. So the alligator clips definitely come in handy and you can do it in about five minutes. It's always smart to verify by turning the breaker off, pulling that receptacle loose, taking the wires loose, the hot wires, and making sure that there's one hot and one not, and then while they're loose and with the breaker on, checking all the other receptacles on that circuit and they should all be dead. And if that's the case, then that one that you've opened up is definitely the first one in the chain. It's that simple. I hope this video has been helpful to you. I really appreciate you watching. Have a wonderful day.